do some God. I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the Ancient of the Days. I'm the Rahman Rahim. And you don't know where I come. You don't know from where I came. All you know is I am one with many aspects, different names. Then one day the thought formed into a word inside my brain. Then I said, let it be. Then next thing I heard a bang. Then I split up into infinite dimensions. What a chain. Now we're all interlinked. We are a one in the same. Okay, cool. And in a lot of those cases, the 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 details of the deal still favored the independent artist because I'm in a position where I can tell you what I'm not going to give of myself and what I'm going to accept and what I'm not going to accept. And the labels had to ride with that if they wanted that artist. Right. Thanks. Thanks for breaking that down. Let's talk about the Eminem. Um, it's, it's a few uh, videos out there that. I don't know. Somebody kind of chopped them up and had you versus Eminem's going back and forth. Um, and then you had a song called Fuck Eminem, right? Can right. you take us back, you know, um, to that and why you came at Eminem and the way you did? Yes, sir. Absolutely. My song was to defend black women at that time. You know, that was a, uh, some tapes that had come up where he had spoke real, real derogatory towards black women, made a lot of racist thing and, and and the tapes were made when he was a, a young man when he was a teenager but they in my opinion were still made at a time where he was old enough to understand what he was saying so my song was a defense and a lot of people would say oh you know what pe people did say oh man that's a publicity stunt you're trying to do that to get on you're trying to do that again we just had a long conversation about um independent the independent grind that we carried out down here in the south i had no desire to do anything as a publicity stunt my thing was it's not appropriate for you because it's not appropriate for me it's not appropriate for us to be disrespecting black women like that even though we've all done it in our records but in our evolution in our growth it's like nah you you don't talk about black women like that so i don't give myself a pass but I definitely don't give you a pass. You don't get a pass for that. So it was inappropriate, bro. And and that's why I made the song that I made. And um, people didn't like it because people were um, fans of his. And, you know, rightfully so. He's a great artist. And so, but they didn't understand my reasoning behind doing it. It had nothing to do with any type of um, ulterior motives to elevate myself. It's to say, hey, man don't do that you you don't get to do that you saw you said um <clears throat> you were protecting black women in that record defending black women and now we hear the hashtag defend black women or protect black women is very very popular now and although it's a very serious situation where we see a lot of black women not protected and it's very true we have to i feel like now they're using that hashtag almost as a weapon as a joke to pit the black man and black woman against each other for example um meg the stallion went through something last night um, I guess she got a little too altercation with her boyfriend. It's all over the place. Academics goes, oh, we got Meg going through something. Hashtag protect black women. Almost like it's a joke. Almost jokingly like, okay, now we're putting a mockery on it. This is what I was kind of afraid of. What do you think about that? When we see things on social media that are seemingly looking to protect or or promote black, but in a sense are looking kind of to mock it. In my opinion, how do you feel about that? Yeah, we have to stop being our own worst enemy. And we have to stop trying to do things, in my opinion, to get views and likes. And if people have personal grudges, if people may not be a fan of a, of a person's music or artist's music, then they will go above and beyond to kind of shoot a slug here and there. Um, women are our most valuable commodity. Sure. You know, not every, every artist, anybody who makes a mockery of a black woman doesn't understand their own origins. None of us are here without a black woman. So it, it's, it's ridiculous to whether you are an artist, whether you are a, a media personality, however it goes down to try to shoot any subliminal slugs or any direct slugs at a situation that's um, uh, involving black women. Now, if she had a domestic situation or hey man, that's it's really honestly none of our business. But once the details of those things do come out, we have to weigh them and decide what is appropriate for us to talk about, what's not appropriate for us to talk about. And if 
a situation comes up where a sister has been wronged, then we have to come to the defense. Even if it's if, if we got to check one of our brothers and say, hey, man, no, you, you just don't do that. We, we have a problem with airing out all our dirty laundry, man. And airing out all our dirty laundry only benefits the very enemy that we've been speaking about in this whole this whole interview because they f- benefit financially from our beasts. They benefit financially from the beasts we have man to man. You know, I'm, I'm sure millions was made of Tupac and Biggie beefing back in the days. But also millions can be made of modern day artists as well. You know, if, if Meg has an issue with somebody, or if she has an issue with another sister, however it goes down, the labels sit up like this and like this is an opportunity to for it to be very um lucrative for us financially. We have to recognize things before they happen. Even if we have a personal situation, it should be a situation where I should be able to call somebody. Somebody should be able to call me and try to figure out how can we prevent this from blowing up because everybody's going to latch on to the controversy unfortunately um the 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 media is going to latch on to it for the story the labels are going to latch on to it for the money the fans are going to latch on to it just for the excitement of the mess yeah so we got to see things um coming down the pike before it happens and not allow ourselves to fall in them kind of traps bro what, what do you think you rank you uh rank as far as uh the, t- the greatest of all time um especially in texas but overall we think you rank because i mean you know, your lyrics is crazy people will sit down and listen to you like mm-hmm. even when they put you against eminem it was like everybody was going with you you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. how you feel about that i don't know but one thing i say when we had those kind of conversations it's not even my place to rank myself it's not my place to rank myself I, I try to be a person who, first of all, I, I, I thank God and and I appreciate anybody who ranks me anyway. That's first and foremost. But I try to be a person who does my best to let the work speak for itself. And um, by me being an independent artist all these years, I'm not known like that. People don't know me, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it, the people who know me, those are people who have just they either stumbled across me they were referred to me by somebody else or they just know me from knowing me but i can't rank myself my statement always is as long as i'm in the conversation if it's a hundred people in the room and one person mentioned me i'm grateful for that um now to to really give you the answer that you might be looking for (laughs) if if as it, as it relates to my confidence right. in terms of my ability, I put myself with anybody. You know, when it comes, I got a pen in my hand. Right? When it comes to one of these, I don't fear anybody. I'm not intimidated by anybody. I feel like I can hold my own against anybody. And my body of work would bear witness to that because I'm, I'm sitting on over 50 albums <clears throat> and um, 50 albums with a consistent delivery of of what i believe to be high level lyricism yeah you know, consistently you know when you got guys who um this the competitive spirit coming out of me right now bro so forgive me all good man. You know, guys in the game who um are great lyricists top lyricists of all time i concede that 100 percent, but they may only put an album out once every three or four years you know, especially once they really start elevating, they don't drop every year. But even if they drop every year, which is great for the fans, I'm dropping two or three a year on average. Average, new material, spontaneous material, not stuff I had sitting up in a vault, spontaneous mm-hmm. brand new material, throwing punches in bunches. So to be able to maintain that level of of consistency with the releases and be able to maintain the skill level to not have a drop off quality wise. That's all I'm gonna say. What does Eminem rank for you? Very high. Top Very five, high. top 10, all time? Uh, he wouldn't be in my top 10. 
because I come from, I'm so old school. You know, I come from almost the beginning of it. I've heard every great lyricist that ever come down the pipe, ever. You know, so with that, and see, I got people like Teela Rock in my top 10. See, and people would, would say, well, man, who is that? Yeah. You know, people in the modern day era was, Teela Rock is never going to leave my top 10. You know, KRS One is in my top 10. He's never going to leave my top 10. Big Daddy Kane, people like that. Scarface. So it's not a knock on any artist that may be a newer artist that's incredibly incredible lyrically, you know, but um, he's a phenomenal, he's a phenomenal talent. And, and he has um, absolutely shaped a generation of lyricists. A lot of cats rap, a lot of cats try to rap like him. See, if, if people try to sound like you and rap like you and you had that kind of influence, then you you made a difference. But for me, you know, there, there are people that I would place above him. Absolutely. You know, you hear, excuse me, that hip hop's a young man's game. It's a young kid's game.